Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel and for all of my newcomers, welcome. My name is Katie and today we'll go ahead and be talking about 10 questions that you should ask when looking for your apartment. Um, now, before we get started, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Oh God, you can't comment because you don't, you haven't seen the video yet. So make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel because let me tell y'all, I have recorded this not once, not twice, but this is my third time recording this. So your girl is working hard to make sure that she is bringing you quality content. Now I do have my handy dandy with me and we're going to go ahead and get started and jump right into these questions. So question number one, um, you definitely want to go ahead and ask about fees. Um, so this is probably the most important thing when asking or searching for your apartment. Um, so you want to go ahead and make sure that you're asking about the admin fee. You want to go ahead and make sure that you're asking about the application fee. If you happen to have any kind of pets, um, make sure that you're asking them if there is a such thing as a pet deposit with that specific apartment. Um, on top of that, ask them if they have a pet rent because a pet deposit is completely separate from pet rent. Um, the deposit typically ranges from between $150. I've even seen them go up to $300. And then the typical pet rent, just depending on um, the type of pet that you have, whether it's a dog or a cat, could range anywhere between $10 to $20 a month. So make sure that you're also asking about that. Um, and then also ask them if they have um, renter's insurance, which is required to stay in that apartment. Um, now, where I stay, which is in the downtown area, we, from the most, for the most part, the apartments that I went on tours with, they did not require any kind of renter's insurance. However, when I stepped outside of downtown Dallas and I went to um, more of like your uptown um, Lemon Avenue areas, those apartments did require renter's insurance. And just make sure that you're asking because they do sometimes they do offer their own in-house renters insurance but just make sure that if you do decide to take them up on that offer that you're asking them if that covers both your personal property as well as their building or if that's just specifically to cover their building um, so make sure that you're asking that question when looking for your next apartment number two is all about parking um now again this is more so focused on your downtown upscale type apartments which which is what my apartment series will be focused on. I want to go ahead and show you guys everything from what I've learned, the knowledge that I've gained um, from the questions and from other people that are also involved in this particular program, which I am so super excited to let you guys know about in the near future, the next video. Um, but this is more so involving like the luxury apartments. My personal apartment, I am paying almost $100 a month just to park in my parking garage. Um, but again, it could be definitely different from your situation so make sure that you're asking them about parking um, ask them if they charge for it if so how much ask them if there's surface parking which is just like you know if you were to go to like a mall or a shopping center you know surface parking lot um, if there's a garage which is actually underground um, which is covered um, the covered is like that little carport ask them if they have covered parking um, and ask them if they have any reserved parking or if it's a free-for-all so definitely go ahead and make sure to ask those questions um, ask them how secure it is or better yet once you go on a tour of the apartment just kind of scope around and see if you see any kind of cameras and whatever kind of designated parking space they have for you and also ask about guest parking um, that is a big key factor in the apartment that I live we have no guest parking so either my guests have to park on the street which depending on the day and the time um, they may potentially have to pay for it um, on the meter parking we also have like random parking lots which ranges between seven to nine dollars a day again just depending on the day and the time that they come in um, we do have like one my apartment has a sister apartment where you can park across the street um, however it's only between the hours of like eight to five i believe and um yeah it's very limited first come first serve so ask about 
parking and guest parking. Number three, we're gonna go ahead and discuss about terms. Um, ask them if there's a six month, 12 month, or 18 month. That's pretty much all I personally have ever heard, but again, make sure that you ask because they could have different amounts besides the, the standard six, 12, and 18. Um, also ask them if that's going to affect the cost of the program. Now again, I will go ahead and discuss this in another video of how I got my luxury apartment for an affordable price. Um, but again, um, we'll go ahead and discuss that in another video. Question number four, packages and delivery, which is a huge topic. It's very important to find out how your packages are being delivered, how they're being stored, who's bringing them in, etc. Um, so you want to ask them if your packages can be delivered to your door um, or if they have um, the Amazon hub, which I will try to insert a video or a picture right here. If not, ask them if they can go ahead and have, if you can go ahead and have your packages delivered to your front office. And if so, what are the hours to pick up the package? That's very important for people that work like a regular nine to five. Definitely wanna make sure that you have access to the package that's being delivered and that you're not having to take out time from your day or maybe, you know, set aside vacation time just to pick up a package. So definitely ask them about packages, delivery, and how secure whatever method they have is question number five which is something that i've learned in just discussing this with some of my friends and co-workers that a lot of people are not aware of valet trash it is the enemy <laughs> so valet trash let me just go ahead and kind of break this down as quickly as possible and i actually have a reference to show you guys so ask them if they have valet trash and just so you guys are aware valet trash your apartment is going to supply you with a trash can the trash can is no bigger than this no bigger than this this is as big as it gets right your trash can is not going to be any bigger than that um you can only put out the trash between specific day on specific days between specific hours um and they're actually charging you to come pick up your trash um, which i think is the most ridiculous idea ever to charge someone to come pick up their trash when they're more than capable to come to just go downstairs and dump it um but they charge you between 20 to 30 dollars a month extra on top of your rent to dispose of your trash a company comes by they pick it up at your door and if you have it out before the designated hours or on, or on days that it's not supposed to go out or after the designated hours then you will be fined for putting your trash out when it was not a designated time or day which again i think is ridiculous but ask if they have valet trash that may be a deterior for you i know for me personally that definitely is a like no-go like that can't be a thing um and then also ask them what are the rules if they do have it like i said some of them well most of them have designated times and days so just make sure that you're asking questions about that to make sure that fits into your lifestyle question number six is all about utilities for me we have our utilities built into our rent so it's all kind of like a um offer one or a bundle package i guess um so we don't have it where we have to find our own provider um and i actually did not know that that was a thing until i started looking at other apartments for you guys again for a future video to show you what's out there um i kind of forgot that that was a thing actually so I was very surprised to know that things or apartments in the Uptown area and the Lemon Avenue area um, and even in the Plano area, which again, that video is coming very soon. Um, you are required to find your own provider. Excuse me, guys. Um, you are required to find your own provider, meaning that you have to go out and pay a separate bill for your electric, your water, you know, et cetera, um, and find your own provider and the prices are gonna vary. I don't know how much on average, uh, average electric bill is because that leads me on to my next question under utilities. Ask them if the appliances that are in your apartment are going to be energy efficient. Um, so I feel like a huge contributor to my bill being so low, because although our electric and all of our other utilities are kind of combined with our rent, um, we can still see the breakdown of how much we're paying for our utilities. And I swear to you guys, my bill has never been over $40. Like, never been over $40 for electric, and I run my 
my air all the time it's always on 73 degrees um for some strange reason i'm addicted to keeping the oven on i don't know why i just do that you asked them if they have those or if that's maybe a package that you can upgrade to that'll definitely go ahead and help you lower those bills in the event that you have to find your own provider to supply your electricity and etc question number seven is going to be fixtures now um this is more so for people who care about the aesthetic of things um if you don't really care about that then you can just kind of skip on to the next question um actually skip on to question number nine because question number eight is going to be a stake as well but basically when you go on your apartment tour sometimes some companies i haven't seen many apartments do this in a while but when i first started looking for my apartment i ran into a lot of apartments doing this and this was more common but basically you want to ask them if everything that you're seeing in the model home besides the furniture of course is going to be standard with your actual apartment oftentimes what they do is they hire a stager and it's the stager's job to make that apartment pull you in it's the stager's job to make the apartment alluring to have you visualizing yourself staying there to make you feel like this is home it's their job to do that and sometimes what they do in order to give you that feeling or to create that vision for you um, they will switch out fixtures they will add things that are not in a typical apartment now some apartments are good about that and they offer an upgraded package but again definitely ask them if everything that you're seeing in the apartment um, is going to be in the model home is going to be in your apartment in addition to that ask them if all the fixtures all the ceiling fans the lighting will come with your apartment because again sometimes what they'll do is they'll put that as an upgraded package as an option that you could do um, or pay for to have these type of amenities in your home so just make sure that you're asking that um, which moves me into question number eight are the walls. Um, ask them if the walls can be painted, if your walls can essentially be damaged from any kind of pictures that you may want to hang, um, or having your TV mounted. Some apartments do not allow you to mount TVs. Some apartments do not allow you to paint your own walls. I recently went on a tour to an apartment, which you guys will again see in another video, where the guys, where the guy there said that they do not allow you to paint your own wall. You can choose from three colors to accent the wall, which they have to hire someone to come in and do so, and it's going to be $100 per wall which again for me is a no-go I painted my own wall and I will go ahead and insert a clip or video or picture either here or here to show you guys what I did um, in my own apartment I did that myself it was a lot less than $100 I can tell you that don't remember the price but it was less than $100 and I did it myself um, so ask them if the walls can be painted and if you can amount any kind of TV or accessories um, as well as hang up any kind of pictures or fixtures to your home question number nine is the loading dock and freight um, so ask them if they have a loading dock to move your furniture on move-in day as well as a freight elevator to send your stuff up the elevator going to your floor when you move in this is important only if you are hiring a moving company um, I found out which I had no idea about this because when I moved I just hired hired i just asked my uncle and my brother and my mom to go ahead and help me move in but basically um oh and i had furniture delivered so i didn't have to worry about that um but we did still have a loading dock and a freight elevator now i found out that some moving companies or actually a lot of moving companies um, if you do not have a elevator um, or a loading dock, they actually charge you more because they're going up two, three flights of stairs. Um, and so they actually charge you a floor fee, which for each floor that they have to go up, they'll charge you an additional fee on top of what they're already charging you. Um, from what I researched, that's anywhere between $15 to $30. Um, and then on top of that, because they're lugging up heavy furniture up and down these stairs, um, obviously they're losing energy while doing 
doing so, um, which is causing more time needed to move you into your new place. So on top of that, they're going to require that you extend out the time. Maybe at first you only booked them for two hours, but because you have to go up to the third floor, now they're using more energy to lug this furniture up and down the stairs. So now you need to book it for three hours. So if you decide or if you didn't move into an apartment with no loading dock, or no freight elevator just make sure that you do um, calculate and include that into your moving expenses i um, having to pay an additional fee for going up the different flights of stairs as well as adding more time onto your moving service and the last question is question number 10 which is security i'm um, now kind of touch bases on that a little bit with the um, parking situation but it's going to be the same thing for just general security um, once you go on your tour that your tour yeah <laughs> once you go on your tour go ahead and just again scope around for as many cameras as you can you know possibly spot um check to see if they're in the hallways if they're in the elevators if your apartment has the elevators um if they're in any kind of garages parking lots whatever you may have if they're in the fronts of the um apartment building you know just go ahead and locate as many security cameras as possible also ask if they have on-site patrol um whether it is a local um Dallas police officer that's just kind of off duty doing this or if they actually have a company that drives around the building at night time to go ahead and patrol it, um, ask them that. Um, also, you want to ask them if they have any kind of a card access. Oh, um, also ask, that was another thing on the list, ask them how do guests come up. Um, ask if you have to go down and physically go get your guests, if you can buzz them up, if they have to go through concierge. Um, now, earlier I mentioned that my apartment has a few sister apartments that are all within walking distance from my apartment. Um, so the sister company across the street, you actually have to check in with concierge. Concierge gives you call you come down uh, excuse me they give you a call and you say yes or no let them in and then you come in that way that's how your guests come in my personal apartment they can do it one of two ways they can either call me and I can buzz them up through my phone um, or I physically have to go down and get them um, and then the one across the street our other sister company they're like it's like Fort Knox and they're like you're not getting in there like at all so they have to physically walk down and get their guests because there's card access everywhere for the elevator for the door it's like gridlock in there you're not getting in so also ask how your guests are able to get in the building which I know some people may look at that as being like a headache but at the end of the day that is protecting you that's protecting me knowing that everyone that is in and out of the building is vouched for by someone so I mean if if you have to get up out your the comforts of your bed your home to go down and get your guests to protect or make everyone else around you feel safe I mean so be it but I think that is it for this video again thank you guys so so much for watching and supporting um, if there's anything that you felt like I missed make sure to go ahead and comment it down below so everyone can get this knowledge everyone can be educated um, and if you want me to go ahead and create a part two to this video I'm pretty sure that I can scrape up some more things that I might have forgot to add into this video or that I didn't feel was as important as the 10 things that I mentioned um, so again go ahead and leave a comment down below to let me know um, I hope this video taught you something it educated you in some way and it intrigued you to carry on with the rest of my apartment series thank you so so much for watching and i will see you guys on the next one bye